Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Just Shelter Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Yo! Do you know why this is the second best night in the entire week? Because it's a Thursday Night Hangout? Indeed it is. I almost lost track, but then I remember yesterday was Wednesday and tomorrow is Friday. Therefore, today is probably, in all likelihood, Thursday. Well, you're, you're doing better than I am, because I had no idea what day of the week it was. Every single day this week, I had to constantly ask people because i could keep track of things but anyways when I, wake up, I definitely think really hard what is today is it saturday damn it it's not no it's not all right so uh, anyways ladies and gentlemen i of course am your host charlie i'm joined once again by the prolific cover himself zelios it's a pleasure this is the thursday night hangout this is this is a weekly show where we try our best to cover the topics most important to you. If you haven't submitted your topic or question or whatever, have no fear. All you got to do is drop it in the chat. We'll try to add it to the list of topics for the show. If we unfortunately do run out of time, we will add it to the very next show and we will cover it then. So let's get into it. And the first thing is I we got to talk about this uh, sweepstakes contest, whatever, that Microsoft has decided to uh, do in in I guess in collaboration with was it Paramount? Yeah, Paramount Pictures to celebrate the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog two movie with a limited time only custom Xbox Series S console and Xbox wireless controllers. Cool man, that that's are a like flur- furry. Wait, what? Okay. No, this seems no. like a terrible you see those idea. Last two words. Seems, okay, I like I, I like I like the you know the custom Xbox Series S co- stop console there. and wireless Just controllers. Stop there. Stop nope, there. Nothing else. No. Nope, but they're there. but the the controllers are furry. They're no, fuzzy no. furry. No, they're, they're not red furry. and blue. No lies. I'm sorry, but I I could foresee that becoming just absolutely disgusting within the first two play throughs utilizing those controllers it actually sounds really like uncomfortable to actually play with and oh, just that's true weird. just that you know, like if you're if you're going you can't do marathon sessions with that because you're just no no offense but you're gonna rub yourself raw <laughs> your hands you could you're gonna rip your hands open just because you're gonna constantly be going over that faux fur over and over and over again I will say though, from a gimmick perspective of doing something truly unique, it is. Like, I'll give them props for that. I'm not saying it's functional yeah. or that I want one, but from a hey, let's try this out and just see what the heck happens. I guess I would assume at some point in the history of controllers that they tried a furry controller like in a focus group. You'd be like, hey, focus group, let's see how this controller works for you. And 120% of them were like, this is a terrible idea. Why do we have a furry controller? Um, so I would assume it's been tried. I would assume that they've researched it. Uh, but from a gimmick to do something new and interesting, why the hell not? What's more still weird to me is still talking about Sonic in a non so in a non um Sega, Sega way. Like it, to me, Sonic is still the Sega hardware game and i know it hasn't been for years obviously because the sega doesn't really exist in a hardware platform um but to me it's still just weird saying sonic and the xbox it just does not compute sonic and anything doesn't compute but to be honest with you sega is based i think sega is finally completely out of hardware now because they sold their share for the arcades because that would because they still were doing arcade machines but they've now sold that as well Oh, that's so sad. Fix a prolapse? Do you know how to fix a prolapse, Zelius? Uh, no. Sorry. I can now help you out, Gordon, with fixing a prolapse. I'm not not that much of an expert. Um, I'm sure YouTube could teach you how to fix it. True, true. All right. So, I mean, look. What's a cool, interesting idea. Not going to lie. I will see uh, Sonic 2 probably sooner than later uh my kids love the first movie and hell i love the first movie and to see knuckles in there and of course robotnik back but this time with a crazy mustache um i'm, I'm all in that's yes yeah. 
Um, okay, so there are some changes coming to a game that Zelius was really excited about like a month ago now, but he is, um, he has, uh, unfortunately, uh, cooled off of Lost Ark. Oh yeah. I haven't touched Lost Ark in like a week or so. Yes. Um, Lost Ark of course is, uh, has been plagued with some issues. Um, and it's been getting really, really bad. Uh, one of the issues, of course, is that the servers are overloading, and one of the main reasons is bots. Um, and the other thing is a, a lot of people are finding issue with uh, what they consider uh, pay-to-win mechanics. Um, but to combat the first one, the uh, the bots issue, I don't, I don't know if it's really combating it, but whatever. Uh, this af they just released a weekly update, and users have who have spent less than five dollars on Steam will have their game accounts restricted. Oh, this means that they will no longer be able to initiate player-to-player -player trades, send in-game gifts, exchange royal crystals for gold, or even send in-game mail with attachments. This is so to combat the bot issue. So the idea is, is because people didn't purchase anything on Steam, therefore they're a bot. That's interesting. Well, I'm I'm very I'm curious. I mean, they banned like a, a million accounts or something, didn't they? Ah, uh, they have. I mean, they have other things in place. Like you have to be like level twenty or thirty to chat in the mainland in the first place, and yet they're still constantly bombarded with um, bots. Anyways, so to me, it's almost like. Yeah, people are going to bot the game in part because of the gold currency that they're always trying to sell is kind of a pain in the rear to get. So, like, they've naturally created this currency that you can bot for, mm -hmm. uh, that bots can successfully farm, that other people like myself don't want to farm for, and therefore I could easily buy to do in-game stuff that you need to increase like your stronghold in your ships, for instance. So they've kind of created a currency mechanism in a way that botting is almost encouraged in a way. So now they've decided that if you haven't spent money on your account, you can't ex do any player to player exchange. That's a very interesting. What's kind of more interesting to me though, is that steam has given them that information um, as far as who has spent money on their accounts, but assume that they would have, they would, they would, um, I mean the, 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 yes, steam would, the, the pay gate would be steam, but there would still have to be information passed so that your, your account would be flagged with information that's that, uh, mentioned that you purchased stuff, right. And they can then extrapolate a value for it. Well, no, I mean, like, it would make no sense to me that a video game developer has any knowledge of me purchasing X amount of dollars on other games on Steam. It doesn't make any sense. No, I think what they mean is $5 worth of Lost Ark stuff through Steam. Oh, so they're basically further differentiating the free tier versus the paid tier. Yes. I think that, oh. I don't, I don't think they're like, have you ever bought a game on Steam? That's how it sounded. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that would, no, no, God, no. No, I mean, that's a pretty natural break point then that you have to have purchased something yeah. um, in order to, to have further participation in the game. Right. That I have no problem with, honestly. Yeah, no, I... Um, now, okay, so so they, they did... So this is their approach to, to try to combat botting. And the, their approach to take... To try to uh, help address the issue or the appearance of the pay to win mechanic is that the company has, um, is going to delay some in-game content to allow players more time to reach those levels naturally. Well, the problem is, is it's a Korean type MMO. So the grind fest is real. I mean, oh God, yes. they released the new content. People who grinded like five hours a day still did not have enough basically power to do it. Yeah. And so just the way that the power gate 
the different in-game content does encourage botting and pay-to-win mechanics. I mean, right. it is. It's like that's something I knew going in. Like that's not why I stopped playing it. I just got more invested into Final Fantasy fourteen. Is all it is. It's still to me not a bad game. Uh, at least you got bored. Not, what's that? You got bored. Yeah, I got bored. Which whatever that happens. It had nothing to do with the grinding. Um, just kind of lost my interest in it. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a grind fest when you get to end game. There's just no other way around it. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, you, it's a, uh, those are two unique approaches. I don't, I mean, I don't recall any other company really going that route, but Hey, I mean, I'm sure that there's other companies that basically said, look, if you want to do, um, any of like the, the player versus, you know, I want to, I want to say like, DDO Dungeons and Dragons Online might have also had the approach of you can't really there's restriction of of doing like player to player uh, stuff unless you paid something. I want to yeah, say. I remember Guild Wars had some restrictions too, but that was more like quality of life features like bag space and stuff like that. Yes, yes, bag um, space, mother effing bag space, man. I mean, it's kind of funny because part of it would just be honestly moderation of the channels too. Um, what moderate? Well, one of my pet peeves is in order to report somebody, you have to actually type in a message. But if I'm reporting them, and one of the reasons is like botting or selling gold or something along those lines, well, why? Like that is the reason I'm reporting them. So why do I need to type in an additional reason? For reporting them. I'm like, I would report all the gold farmers if that's all I had to select from the drop down box. Mm -hmm. But I'm not gonna select ban them or report them because they're make, gold. Uh, and then have to type in they were selling golden chat to make, make bot ban to make banning via via bot dip more yeah. difficult. It's just silly to me. So, so well, you're gonna try to ban my bot, so I'm just gonna grab random people's names and say Ban them. Yeah. Nah. I remember this was like a long time ago, but there was this, um, I don't even remember what the hell it was for, but there was this, uh, I was at a, uh, some kind of like video game workshop over, um, uh, one summer. And, uh, there was this kid who had written this script and he knew when the moderators were going to go through uh, the website game, the, the game that was on a, uh, on a window, uh, you know, an, on a browser tab. And so he had it down to the minute. So he would basically, he would look at the, the system clock and then make the, the, his script run. And then he would have to manually do it, manually stop it because he was looking for some kind of indicator to yeah. stop it. But I was like, Jesus, kid, you got way too much time. <clears throat> the good old days. Okay. Speaking of, well, it's not really good old days, but did you hear what happened uh, yesterday to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 owners? They got updates? They got updates. And the updates broke shit. Oh, I did not actually experience that. I have not seen that, to be honest. So... Uh, many PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 owners reported issues upon getting the update uh, that basically uh, if they attempted to get online with their games, they were getting, many were getting error messages that said could not verify PlayStation Plus subscription. Oh, nice. So many games such as Elden Ring, uh, Grand Theft Auto Online, Call of Duty, Vanguard, and many more, actually, uh, were affected. Now, a lot of people, ironically, Elden Ring dropped a patch about the same time that PlayStation dropped a patch. <laughs> so a lot of people are going, oh shit, it was Elden Ring until other people are like, well, I'm not playing Elden Ring and I'm still having problems. Um, so... So, totally random. I didn't know. So, like, I typed in PS5 to Google News. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't know that was going on. Like, for instance, Walmart... You can purchase a new PS5 right now for eight hundred sixty nine dollars. Eight hundred sixty nine dollars. I didn't know that like Walmart was upselling it. 
who knows at this point. I don't, I don't, yeah, it's because, like, when I was getting, like, when I got mine, they weren't upselling, like Walmart at least, because I remember that's one of the um, companies that I keep an eye on, and they were not upselling then at least. So I guess they've gotten into that game where it's like, aha, we can make more money off of this. That's really interesting. I wouldn't think they would do that. I would assume there would have been like some kind of agreement from Sony, like that. Is it a bundle know, or something? I thought it was, but I could not find like any bundle information in it. It just eight hundred. You're right. It says eight hundred sixty nine dollars. It said. Uh, I'm trying to find if there is like a bundle because that was my first thought. Like, what's included is the PlayStation Five, the Dual Sense controller, a USB cable, HDMI cable, and that's normally what comes with it. That seems really high. Really high. Or you could buy the PS5 console with the controller and accessory kit for $859. Yeah, that too. <laughs> so bizarre. I don't know, man. That's really weird. Huh. Or you could get the Nintendo Switch Diago, Diago and Polka Edition for $259. Woo! Yeah. Switch for the win. But seriously, like, <laughs> that that has got to be, like, the worst nightmare whatsoever. And I'm hoping that they fix that issue, like, super-duper quick with giving a an update that's supposed to improve your experience, and then you basically blew up all the online experiences for the games online. And, and as we have stated many times, it's unfortunate that so many games have required some online component to play a single player game. But still, that's, that is weird that Walmart would be upselling. Cause that's what, like it's supposed to be like 600 bucks, right? Yeah. 599 for the disc and 499 for the other one. I Let think. me check Amazon. I honestly don't remember now. It's been so long. Wow. Are, are you trying to rub it in our face, Zelius? Well, I mean, what's crazy to me is all these years later, I mean, two years later, basically, and it's still, I mean, on Amazon, it's still selling for a grand. Now, that's through resellers, so that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's obviously through somebody else. Um, but, I mean, a year later, it's still crazy up. Two years later, sorry, it's still crazy up sales. Well, I, you know. The world that that is today ain't helping the situation at all. So we still live in a world today. Are you sure about that? Now I will tell. This is a little bit off subject, but maybe it is on subject. Uh, there's a lot of uh, hmm. uh, shipping companies that are um, increasing their uh, price per mile. Yeah, uh, and they are they are now quoting a lot of companies. Uh, 50 cents per mile, which Damn. is astronomical. So maybe that's that's where the the increase of price is because it's going to cost us so much just to bring a PlayStation into a store. Well, why do you think uh, Amazon basically created their own shipping company? Exactly. But still, I mean, you they look at well, I mean, then Amaz those are all resellers, but still. Yeah. I mean, it's going to cost Amazon more for shipping, but they at least control that cost themselves. Yes, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Um, so let's see here. Some other news. Uh, Red, uh, Red CD Project, right? I can always get that wrong. Project CD Red Key? There you go. Or whatever. I, can never get, I always get it mixed up too. The makers of Cyberpunk 2077. There you go. That's a better way for uh, it. Have, have announced that there is going to be a new chapter in the Witcher uh, video game series. Now, of course, we've been seeing new chapters for the Witcher TV series. We've seen anime and we've seen uh, we're, there's a prequel coming. Uh, but there's going to be one, uh, there's going to be a new Witcher game after uh, Witcher 3. Uh, was it the Wild Hunt? No, it's uh, the Witcher 3. Yeah. Yeah. And this one, they are, they've already promised that instead of utilizing uh, the Red Engine, which is the one they utilized for Cyberpunk 2077. They're going to be making this one on the Unreal Engine 5. Ooh. Um, 
And not only are they going to do that, but they're going to get the full support of Epic to make sure that this that it runs smoothly on the Unreal Engine 5. Interesting. So perhaps, you know, much less hiccups. Um, well, I also saw that the lead like project manager for it was like, in this time, with the new Witcher, there will be no crunch time for our employees. I believe it will win that game ships. <laughs> that was my first. So is this game going to ship uh, around six years then? I think, I think everyone. I think the the uh, the prediction is bare minimum holiday twenty twenty four, more like twenty twenty five. I would always be shocked if it's twenty twenty four. Not gonna lie. I would. That would be awesome. I mean, if they could turn it around that fast, to be honest, because that's that's they're not they're not talking anything about Geralt. They're not talking about where it's gonna be. Uh, what? Well, I guess the other question. Is, so, when your company like think about it, if you're CD Projekt Red Key, like, take Square Enix, right? Yep. If you're taking years to develop a game, you're fine because you have other cash cows that are still making you games. Yep. Well, Final Fantasy XIV. Yep. But if you're, you know, CD Projekt Red Key, you're making, like, one game at a time, right? Well, they're, they're going to re- – they're, they've got a bunch of – apparently they've got a bunch of expansions planned for Cyberpunk 2077, which will continue to be on sense. Red Engine. Well, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, that would make sense to kind of hold the tight on that. Um, especially since that patch, which I know you haven't played. I have not played personally. Fixed a lot of the main issues um, is everything I saw. Well, if I, if, you know, if I were to ever go back and I can successfully fall off the second story <laughs> fire escape and not instantly die, then we'd be good. Well, maybe you shouldn't be working, like, jumping off of a second floor. Like, if you're real life, sir, and you jumped off of your second floor balcony, you would probably die. No, I'd still be, I mean, I might be hurt, but I wouldn't insta die because I could fall further and, like, because there's a good chance I'm going to, like, land in a pile of trash. I think we need to find out for science. I am not going to try to throw myself off of different I, heights. It sounds like a deals. bet waiting to happen, sir. I don't know. I think you need to prove that you are the correct person. No. Okay. Not going to happen. I mean, Not going to happen. Not going to no, happen. No. What if we did it as a fundraiser for Ultra Confusion? I'd rather just raise money for the kids than than Ultra Confusion with okay. bodily... I'm not trying to... Fundraiser for Ultra the Confu- kids! Ultra Confusion does not need me. to do a jackass episode. But it'd be for the kids, man. No. Oh, well, all right. Don't say I never tried. Right. Okay. Sure. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to take a quick second here to thank the friends of the show. Uh, so hold on to your leader, Hosen. We have friends. Yes, we do. Isn't it amazing? I'm amazed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the first friends of the show, of course, is the Indie Cluster. The Indie Cluster is an organization of independent game developers that want to gain exposure by being involved in the community. They collectively journey to popular conferences as a traveling booth to help gain attention for their games. They make partnerships in local communities to bring games to the mainstream mindset. They highlight local, unusual, and rare concepts to challenge the paradigm of the common. They also host events to teach kids and minority groups about game development to hopefully one day enter the industry themselves. For more information, go to IndieCluster.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-C-L-U-S-T-E-R dot com. Dot com. Now, of course, the next friend of the show that we have to, um, that we have to give a shout out to is a friend that we met via the the convention that shall not be named, but that's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you about Noodle Boy Media. Founded Noodle in Boy. 2015 by Andrew Tran, Noodle Boy Media, previously White Kid 47 Media, is your choice for professional photo shoots and panel recordings at conventions. They pride themselves in providing a high level of professionalism, top-notch experiences, and quality services. If you want more information and to view their full list of services, check out Facebook.com slash Noodle Boy Media. Noodle Boy Media! Now, of course, let me talk about the man who helps adjust my outlook on life and my spine as well. And that, of course, is Hirokai Practic. 
Do you have a spine, sir? Yes, I do. Hero Chiropractic is a unique healthcare practice set up by Ryan Moore, the company's focus to elevate a patient's experience of freedom, creative expression, and joy. They believe that everyone can be a hero and has incredible heroic potential inside themselves waiting to be unleashed. Hero Chiropractic focuses on mobile chiropractic care in the greater Atlanta area. They are committed to healing clients by creating a plan of action uniquely suited for each person. They make that plan of action as convenient and affordable as possible, and most importantly suited to your individual needs. For more information, go to HeroChiropractic.com. And of course, the person, the last friend of the show that we need to give a quick shout out to is the amazing maestro behind the new intro and outro music that, of course, is Crosspad Creative. Need a new logo or want to work on full branding and content strategy? Or maybe you need music or audio for your content. Crosspad Creative offers a whole host of solutions for individuals and small businesses. Just email Josh at crosspadcreative at gmail.com and see what he can do for you. Now, of course, since we did that kind of housekeeping uh, by thanking all of our amazing friends of the show, let's do a couple quick ones for Alter Confusion. And, of course, the first one, the most important one uh, to all of us, is the fact that, ladies and gentlemen, Alter Confusion, for the 11th year straight, will be participating in Extra Life. Extra Life is gamers doing what they do best, game. game. They help sick and injured children at their children their chosen Children's Miracle Network Hospital. The money that we raise through Extra Life will go directly to Children's Healthcare of Atlanta as unrestricted funds. That means that the hospital decides where and how to spend the money to ensure the dollars we raise make the biggest impact in the lives of the kids they treat. So if you have the capacity to donate, please go to extra-life.org and search for Altered Confusion. So much confusion. And we're here to alter it, baby. Uh, and then, of course, ladies and gentlemen, um, Alter Confusion if you, uh, survives on amazing individuals like the friends of the show. So let me tell you a little bit about that and the fact that Alter Confusion has a Patreon page. Patreon lets you, the fans, lovers, haters, supporters, demigods, uh, specter, um, interdimensional beings, aliens, undead, Vampires are undead, so we can kind of cross that off the list. We can kind of bunch them together, you know. Uh, there's so many different amazing individuals out there and supporters uh, to become active participants in the work we love through a monthly membership. This gives you access to exclusive content, community, and insight into your creative process. In exchange, we gain a bit more freedom to do our best work and the stability we need to build an even stronger creative career. And oh, by the way, the money that we've been raising through Patreon We'll cover our electric bill at Momocon, which of course is coming up at the end of this May. So if you're in the Atlanta area, go to Momocon. Dot, what's it? Momocon.com? Pretty sure it's Momocon.com. It's, it's, it's Momocon.com. Is it? Yes, it is. Momocon.com. And so you too can join us at that convention. Now, of course, uh, currently on Patreon, we have two kind of one, two uh, different pay levels. There is a $1 level which of course will make you a patron and will allow you to gain early access to our playthroughs which currently we just posted a new playthrough it's called the irony curtain um oh gosh oh i forgot the whole time i can't pronounce the whole title so i'll have to give it to you in just a second i'll have to look it up again uh but it's called irony curtain which is kind of ironic given the the current global Landscape, but whatever. Anyways, uh, you gain early access to all our playthroughs. You gain uh, the ability to take part in polls to, and communications to help shape the future of Alter Confusion. If you want, to, and of course, that is a $1 tier, that's $1 a month or $12 a year. Uh, if you want to go to the next tier, which is $5 a month or $60 a year, you can not only gain everything you got in the $1 tier, but you also become... Uh, eligible to have your name or organization added to the thank you section for every single Thursday night hangout. Um, so if you'd like to be a patron, a patron to Alter Confusion, go to patreon.com slash Alter Confusion. Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com slash Alter Confusion. Okay. 
Ah, we'll do it anyways. Ladies and gentlemen, okay? if you feel that perhaps you do not want to do a subscription, but you want to give something to Alter Confusion to help support and show love to Alter Confusion, you could always mail it to us. And in order to mail it to us, you have to send it to our P.O. Box. And our P.O. Box is the following. It is at 1551 Dunwoody. That's D-U-N-W-O-O-D-Y Village Parkway. This next part is super important because it's the P.O. Box number, number 88276. You do not put number 88276. It does not get to us and will be returned to you. The city, once again, is Dunwoody. That's D-U-N-W-O-O-D-Y, Georgia. Zip code is 30338. And I'm not exactly sure what Zelius is typing in the chat. I think he's just putting in random numbers. Oh, never mind. 88276 would be the P.O. Box number. See, I've had a long day. It's okay. <laughs> Anyways. Glad I can help. All right. So um, the next story uh, has to do with the fact that there is going to be another Mass Effect. Don't know when, but there is another Mass Effect. And, of course, the rumor mills are starting to get a little bit crazy, crazy. when it comes to this new Mass Effect. Um the main the main issue that a lot of people are starting to speculate about is the fact of uh, has to deal with how Mass Effect three ended. Yeah, many people might remember that there was a huge controversy and a lot of hate um, thrown at Bioware because there they at at um, at the initial release there were three one two three options uh for the ending which to me made sense yes did it kind did did all your choices that you made early in the game kind of get swept under the rug yes however the three choices made sense uh i believe we're outside of, we're, we're outside spoilers right yes all right so one of them is you blow up the relays okay <gasps> so so the question is if Ma if you're gonna have a mass effect 4 are you going to continue? How are you? Are is there going to be a continuation in in uh, from Mass Effect Three? Because so you're basically saying they're going to retcon Andromeda. I think everyone's already dropped that ship. Uh, I like. I have a problem with that. It was not that bad of a game. Like, in the grand scheme of RPGs, it was a B roll. Standard RPG. So, the problem was, so you're, what you're trying to tell me is a Bruce Campbell production. Yeah, but like it was in the shadow of one of the best game trilogies of all time, and so it was kind of like if it was, if Andromeda was its own game yeah. that stood on its own without yeah. the entire Mass Effect behemoth behind it, yeah, it would have been fine, honestly. But people were like, oh, it's not Mass Effect. Well, no shit. When you play like. A top tier AAA 99% game. I don't mean AAA publisher, I mean a AAA quality game. Right. Yeah, everything's going to pay in comparison to it. So I played Andromeda. I thought it was a fine game. It wasn't earth shattering. Um, it didn't have the mind blowing stories or that I remember. That's mm -hmm. fair to say, but mm -hmm. like it wasn't bad. So I don't know. I have a problem with everybody's with just retconning Andromeda, but that's just me. But okay, but, but but it okay. So the 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 question of the matter is that um, there's a very good chance that they're going to have to revisit um, first contact with a lot of aliens. Yeah. And how are they going to deal with that? Um, now, of course, with it's not one thing that a lot of people don't understand is. The mass of the mass relays being destroyed doesn't mean that all of the other races disappeared along with it. It just means that travel is no longer available. Okay. Sure. So, the, like all these people going, oh well, well, when are they going to meet these guys? They they've already met them. Okay. It's 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 more of a matter of when will they meet them next, which. Or surprise, there was this other super secret form of mass. It, transit like, super speed transit that we're finding out about now it's a sci-fi saga anything can happen yeah, i know i i just find I don't it think interesting that, that so many people are getting hung up on like well well, well if if we blew up the mass 
the the mass relays, then then how are we gonna, uh, you know, what's gonna happen when we meet these races again? We'll meet them again. Yeah. Like, it, it's not like they've re erased the the history books. It's not like all that. I will that shit. Well, the question is. Do you retcon your ending? Or do you have it like the previous Mass Effects where you can import your save file, but then again, let's be honest, who still has their Xbox 360 save file just exactly. chilling Cause, around? Because uh, you're guess, talking again, two gen three. now. You're going to be talking right? two generations removed from the 360. Yeah, so really, honestly, like, unless you're like one of those uber crazy gamers who has like their old 360 save just laying around, it's only going to be people who have the legendary edition, which yep. was a fair amount to be fair. Yep. Um, or is it one of those where you can like have like this like abridged hour version where you make your choices? That's what that's actually what I was thinking. I was thinking that one approach that they could potentially take. Now, of course, this is my this is my brain. I'm not saying that this is what Bioware is going to do, but they're going to ask you kind of like a questionnaire of. No, we like don't speak for, we don't speak for bioware yeah we unfortunately we do not speak for bioware um uh you know it, it's some kind of like um you know multiple choice questionnaire and then it just builds off from there the starting point um yeah i do want to say that this is being that mass effect 4 or whatever the next max effect is uh is being developed at the same time that dragon age 4 is being developed now dragon age is ahead of mass effect in development from my understanding um but it looks like the they too will be using the new unreal engine so they'll have a lot of experience to maybe um skip out on some of the hiccups uh graphic wise um so as a former developer yourself what are your thoughts on them using you know something like unreal versus their own in-house was it a frostbite if i remember that they yes, were using frostbite. um so what are your thoughts on using your own in-house engine versus something like um in this case it could be unity or it could be um unreal they got these different engines what do you think of using one versus the other so um an internal engine potentially you can you you can make it um kind of like squeeze out the extra ones and zeros for you. However, you are your own support on that engine. So if something does break because you try to push it to the limit, it's your damn fault. Whereas if you break, if something happens in the Unreal Engine, there's a good chance that you've got uh, a very dedicated support staff over at Epic that'll be like, oh shit, yeah, we'll get on that. So it, put, it takes a lot of pressure off of the developer because the developer is just... Uh, doesn't have to deal. The graphics engine is a humongous portion, especially. So dumb these question, mm -hmm. just dumb question. Mm -hmm. But if I'm Bioware and I have Frostbite, mm -hmm. don't I have my own internal support team, no different than Epic would for my engine. You probably have a skeleton crew uh, because you're probably you have Frostbite and you're going to try to get the most out of it. You're probably not trying to improve it that much because. It depends or on how somebody like Epic has their own dedicated team where they have because you're to licensing out services. that engine to third parties. Hmm. That it, it is, and it's it's a it's it almost a, seems counterintuitive to me, honestly. But yeah, well, it's you know, it's it's like I mean, that's why a lot of companies, uh, there's a lot of contractors out there that bring in the big bucks when they get uh, when they accept a contract with the company for uh, a dead coding uh, language that no one knows because yeah, they don't, true. you don't need a specialist unless shit goes wrong. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, whereas on real, I mean that, that is part of their product line is their, their graphics engine. Um, so, I mean, I, I've got no problem with, you know, Bioware and, or, um, products, uh, project red or projects, whatever the CD project red, whatever the damn name of the company is. The Witcher company. Yeah. The, the, yeah, the Witcher company. I got no problem with them, you know, utilizing someone else's engine. I've never had a problem with that. It's cool 
uh, if if you ha- the other thing is that making a graphics engine is not easy, um, uh, especially if you're trying to keep up. You the the easiest way for a developer to absolutely get in an infinite loop is feature creep with a with a um, graphics engine because there are people out there who try to make their graphics engine as best as 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 best um, as good as other graphics engines and when new technology comes out they want to update that graphics engine that's all they think about is the graphics engine they forget about their game (laughs) i've got there's a certain game in my mind where that comes into play but i'm going to refrain because i've still that kickstarter has gone nowhere well i'd be curious also like from a cost standpoint what is the cost of developing your own engine versus imagine what is not an insignificant licensing and support fee from um, Epic to also then license um, their graphics engine in this case. Well, once again, the thing is with when you build something internally is you're building it specifically for you. You don't have to uh, find workarounds to do exactly what you want to do if the third-party engine doesn't do exactly what you want to do. Um, and then, of course, when you're doing a AAA title, you're probably signing – a pretty hefty contract as well as you're also hopefully if you're smart doing a service contract um ladies and gentlemen let me tell you it i know it's it it doesn't make sense to have that service contract but when you don't have it and you need help they will squeeze you for every single i'm not saying that unreal do, or, or epic does this but a lot of companies out there that have service oh, yeah. contracts will basically bend you over and you will have to take it up the kazoo because you didn't pay up front. Well, it's kind of like insurance. I mean, most of us go through a large portion of life not having a large insurance expense. Yep. But if you incur that insurance expense because something, you know, cash traffic happens to your family or whatever, then you're pretty much up the creek. Just make sure that you thoroughly read all your contracts to make sure that what you think you're being insured for or supported or covered for, it's actually what you're paying for. Well, one of the worst with that is um, pet insurance. Uh, Actually, home insurance is a bitch and a half. If you're not careful, you may uh, find out that if something happens on your property that's not within the footprint of your house, it's all on you. It's not actually the insurance company. So let's say that- Got a condo at that point, sir. Again. So let's just say that mm, your sewage pipe busts in your front yard. Mm. There's a very good chance that that's all you because your insurance policy states within the footprint. Yep. Just, you know, will basically do anything and everything possible to get out of paying any insurance cent. And that's any insurance company. It's not just Allstate or State Farm or any of them. They all, yep. that's how they make their money. Getting out of paying insurance claims. Okay, so let's change gears from leaky toilets to... Uh, Is your toilet leaking again? No. E- no, it's not. Oh, okay, good. Okay, so let's let's talk about... Uh, there's there's two stories I want to bring up uh, real quick. Uh, this both in the TV realm. Um, there was a game that I played a lot of a while ago. It's called a, a Plague Tale. It was set in like medieval... I want to say England, um, and it and it uh, centered. Oh no, sorry, France, uh, and it centered around uh, the uh, Darun children as they picked their way through uh, 14th century France, desperately trying to stay one step ahead of both the Inquisition and a terrifying army of black rats that has enveloped the countryside. And what I mean, when when the description of terrifying army of black rats, that is an understatement. And I'm very curious to see because this they're they're gonna make a they're apparently making a live action version or show around this this game. Um, I, we're talking like a mountain of rats, possibly. Like if you in no, the game, no. if you got if you got out of like the um, if you got into the darkness, I'm talking rats would come at you and basically envelop your whole body. This is something I don't want to play. I've already decided, like, this is already gave me the heebie-jeebies just thinking about it. 
dude, it gave me the heebie-jeebies no. playing. I, like, no. Just, just the off chance of accidentally getting a little too close to outside of the the um, the light of the torch or the bonfire or something and just watch everything. I will just, not play this game. <laughs> it is spooky. I will have, I will legit have nightmares. I'll be calling Charlie at 2 a.m. Hold me. Hold yeah, me. It's... Man, I, I tell you what, I I I'll be fully uh completely honest with you. I did not beat the game because um it actually had nothing to do with the rats. It had to deal with the Inquisition portion. Uh I couldn't get par- I couldn't uh this is a spoiler alert for everyone, but Charlie sucks at stealth games. He mm. absolutely sucks at stealth games. And there is a stealth um component to this game where you're trying to evade Inquisition soldiers and priests and members, um, you're constantly on the run. And so I somehow survived all of those shadowy corners, so the rest didn't get me, but it was indeed the Inquisition um, that... Uh, I forgot you in the end. Yeah, there was just like, there. if I remember correctly, it's been a while, but there was like a, just a section where you you had to time your movement and i could do it 85 percent of the way but i always screwed up like in the last 15 percent. and i'm sorry but I, I can't rinse and repeat stealth st- stealth is already difficult for me so you add on the fact that i have to be perfect in the stealth piece it's just it's the it's not going to end well for charlie Sorry, but no. So, but I mean, I'll be very interested. I'll, I'd be very interested to see the amount of rats they're going to be um, showing in the show. Because I mean, that's a huge, perp- uh, you know, component of it. It's not like it's not like four or five rats. We're talking like two hundred rats just immediately covering over someone who went outside of the 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 range of the fire. Once again, no, not fine. Now, the other TV news I wanted to bring up there was there was there is a um, a Netflix original TV series called um, Archive Eighty One, and Archive Eighty One is uh, it follows uh, this archivist Dan, who takes on a mysterious job restoring a collection of damaged videotapes from nineteen ninety four. He finds himself reconstructing the work of a document a documentary filmmaker, Melody, and her investigation into a dangerous cult. As Dan is drawn into Melody's story, he becomes convinced he could save her from the terrifying end she met 25 years ago. Um, This was a fucked up show. I watched the whole thing, and I was very curious to see if this was going to get a second. I mean, it absolutely, at the end, it, it was, if that was the ending, man, that sucks. For certain people, but yeah. but that they, and they've decided that they're not going to do it. They're they, oh. they've canceled it. Um, the interesting thing is that um, um, the initial like uh, reception for this thing put it in the top ten for the Netflix and did really well in like Nielsen ratings or something like that. But then apparently it just it must have just really. Once the you know the shiny new wow factor was gone, it must have just you know dipped or just dropped like a rock. Uh, so now it may were- also be just the shows I personally watch and give thumbs up to. Mm-hmm. I honestly don't remember ever seeing Archive eighty one anywhere in like the new or top in America list. And I usually go through those pretty regularly. Well, it wasn't. It was in the top ten for the U.S. for a while until uh, this I was back remember. in January. Yeah, I just, I just got to give you an idea of probably why it was canceled. It's probably because I don't even, that's like the first I've heard of it. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have a Netflix original, you better hope to God that Zelius recognizes the name. Otherwise, you're fucked. <laughs> you're that's, up. Nobody else would even know it exists if it's not for me. <laughs> Zelius, have you tried Airborne Kingdom, by the way? Tried what? Airborne Kingdom, that, um, that uh, 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 kingdom builder in the air off on nope. Steam. Nope, I've been playing too much uh, Final Fantasy, man. Oh, well, I, I, I'm well, 
I'm about to write up a review for it. That's why I... And I spent this entire weekend binge watching the most recent season of Legends of Tomorrow. Oh, well, there you go. I... There's some shows where, like, when the new season drops, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just watching it. I just can't not. I just have to watch all 13 episodes of it in basically one setting. It's just the law. Oh, I see. There's not many. Like, actually, there used to be a few... That's probably one of the only shows that's still around that I do that on. <laughs> I um, I watched. I finally broke down and watched. There was there's a Netflix show called Red Cells at Work. Yep. And I was like, all right, fine, because I kept hearing like interesting things about it. The whole thing takes per takes place within someone's body. Hmm, that's crazy. Uh, and red cells is literally it's red blood cells, and it's like. All the all the cells are actually like anime characters, and they have to battle viruses and infections, which are like the monsters. The white blood cells and the T cells, you know, get to do like all the cool, like you know, bloody, gory stuff. But it centers around this one red blood cell who cannot find her way through the system. Um, but it was actually it was actually really good. I I mean I ended up binge watching it and watched it a lot faster than I anticipated. So there you go. Then I also watched another anime that's a little bit older that um, I got really sad <laughs> about at the end because I was, it was it was an unfair ending. It was called Angel Beats. Uh, if you've watched, if, if you are an anime fan out there and you've watched Angel Beats, you probably understand why I think the ending was really fucking sad. Yeah, don't know that one. But um, oh yeah, I was gonna look up the. Uh, the name of the the new uh, early uh, access playthrough for those who are interested, um, if I can actually click on the right folder, it is called Irony Curtain from Matryoshka with Love. It's a tale centered around a an individual. Actually, I'll just give you the the blurb here. Um, let's see here. Uh, It's the uh, experience the totalitarian Matryoshka through the eyes of Evan, a low-ranking goofy journalist, and voluntarily pulled right into the middle of an espionage standoff between two powers. Jump into the wacky spy adventure, uncover secrets of the bizarre communist country, and the powerful capitalist empire. Witness a strong, full a story full of unpredicted unpredictable twists and turns and discover the true agenda of the mysterious supreme leader. What mm. business might the loving father of the Matryoshkin nation have with a lowly capitalistic pin pusher? Why suddenly lift the irony curtain and welcome a stranger into Matryoshka? And why is there an alligator in the middle of the bathroom? Those questions and more. It was kind of funny because like, you know, because of where we are in the world today. Um, and, deal, you know, you've got this guy, this ideological, you know, this this guy who's got stars in his eyes saying, communist is amazing. And he's being filled, filled all this, like, filtered propaganda. And when he actually gets there, he sees how bad things are. Um, and I'm not going to say any more because I've ruined it for you. So if you want to know the entire story, you can, of course, become a patron which is $1 a month or $12 a year, you get early access to our playthrough. Or, of course, you can wait until I actually publish the playthrough. Uh, Don't yeah. kill it all for me, man. Yeah. Um, but, uh, like I said, a plan Airborne Kingdom. Uh, you should probably see a review in that soon. And then the Potato Blossoms. Damn, I can never remember the whole freaking title to the game. But... Whatever, I'm also playing that game too. Nice. Yes, yes. But um, I don't really have any additional, you know, stories. Uh, that was it for me, ladies and gentlemen. So I apologize. The of the week, as far as you know. I, if if anything else is happening, I am unaware, unfortunately, unaware of it at this current moment in time. I feel like there's another story that I want to talk about, but for the life of me, I cannot remember what it would have been about. Um, so yeah. Has anyone seen the, 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 the halo 
TV show because I think it I think it's already on Paramount Plus. I haven't seen it. I don't have Paramount Plus. Oh Christ. We have a new lawsuit against the Activision and Blizzard, rampant sexism and, and retaliation for anyone who speaks up against it. I am shocked that there's another one. <laughs> I know, seriously. When does their merger go through? Oh, uh, I know. I want to say it was next year because of the financial, uh, the the fiscal year deal. Um, I will tell you that that there is now a rumor, a possibility that Lost Ark could be headed towards the consoles. Um, that is not a game I think I would enjoy in the console. I I agree. It's kind of like remember like Diablo when it tried coming out for the console and it just that was, was not well made for that. And I just like playing Lost Dark. It, like it works well with the keyboard and mouse. Uh, I just it probably is one of those where some of the so like when you're playing Final Fantasy 14, there's a couple of classes where on the controller, they have like the way like you kind of station your spell, but there's so many macros and built-in functionality to help control that. Like for instance, like you can macro your spell to have like the AOE effect over the enemy that you're currently targeting. Cause mm-hmm. it's a tag target, it's a tab target system, even with the controller, because you use the D-pad arrow keys or there's different ways you can do it. But I don't really call any kind of advanced functionality like that in Lost Dark to really give that player that nuanced controller feel that you would need. So like when I played, I played like, to me, the close DPS classes, like the, um, oh, who's the two-sorted person? The Berserker. Yeah. Um, They felt good. Like that worked for me because you're just there and you don't really have to aim anything. But like, the sorcerer who I played a lot, like you have a lot of spells that you're targeting in certain locations. And also in a game like 14, where it's like you have a, what is it? It's like a 2.5 second global cooldown, which in the world of action games is really freaking slow, honestly. Right. So you kind of have a little bit of time to position your spells if you need to, and it's fine. Whereas, I mean, you played Blast Dark, like, it's like, boom, boom, boom. Like, there's, as soon as, like, the second that, like, next fire spell is up, like, you can't be, oh, let me drag my cursor over here and release this fire spell over here. Yeah, The game just doesn't work that way. It's just so quick. Um, And, like, especially the bosses, like, they're like, zoom, 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 zoom. So, my experience of playing... uh the game, I'm not convinced. I mean, it's like, I mean, controller support is built in. It's already there. Um, I'm just not convinced that it's the game. I mean, but then again, they did it for um, Path of Exile. True. I do I do want to point out what? that, yeah. and Zelius will agree with me, I hope, on this, is that it, it, it is very nice to have games on multiple platforms. But not yeah. all games should be on every platform. Well, my problem is with Path of Exile on the console, and this is obviously set up dependent on your setup. I had a really hard time reading, like the. Um, it, I mean, it's when you talk like loot fest RPG. Like mm-hmm. to me, that's when the games at the top of. You're getting so much freaking loot to go through in Path of Exile. Right. And it would, for me, it was really hard to A, go through the loot, read it on my TV while sitting on my couch. And also just the controller scheme with having to do, like, if you have not played Path of Exile, you're dealing a lot with like socketing gin. So it's a lot of very minute controls that you're kind of toggling through just did not feel good to me mm. um, with the controller on Path of Exile. Just didn't feel right. That's just me. Um, combat felt fine, actually. Like, even, like, the casting, like, the way the casting 
classes were set up, that worked pretty well for me, all of them. It was just like everything outside of that was like, eh. Uh, I, think, I, I think I found the story that I, I don't know if I intentionally skipped it or not, but it has to deal, it has to do with um, a modder bringing um, was it Ocarina in Time to the PC and they say, and them saying that it was done in, <laughs> uh, legally. Mm. Mm. Uh, the creator took steps to avoid legal trouble, which immediately I, I say bullshit. There's you, no way you're getting out of legal trouble. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, there is, um, Let's see. The 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 team claims it can avoid Nintendo's legal team with the Ocarina of Time PC port. Uh What? No. It's it because it revolves around a tool that turns a user supplied and hopefully Nintendo 64 ROM. Okay, as soon as you say Nintendo 64 ROM, it's now illegal. You cannot do ROMs. I'm sorry. That's not that's, it works, but it's user provided, man. It's fine. Like, <coughs> I but they make it look prettier. Yeah, no big deal. No big deal. Uh, let's see here. What, what do they say? Um, as the software doesn't include any Nintendo content, the developers supposedly can't pursue the 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 modders over copyright violation. Okay. Okay, I see their approach. They they created software that will play Ocarina of Time. However, that software does not get... There has to be something. It, there's Because there's got to be some kind of system check to make sure that it... Right? Oh, fuck. This is so stupid. See, now you're behind it. I can feel it. You're like, you know what? They're right. I actually can't play this legally. I'm going to go play it right now, sir. Well, it's just like... Uh, you, it, yes, I created an emulator. Okay, it, but the but the problem is as soon as can your emulator play Nint a Nintendo title? Yes, it will not be amused. Nintendo not amused. I'm sorry, yeah. but Nintendo will find a way to rake you over the coals. If if you find if you allow uh, some sort of program or application to circumnavigate the, because I'm pretty sure that's on the, what is it, the virtual console? That's yeah. where you can actually play it. If you circumnavigate anything Nintendo, you're going to get a knock on the door. Yeah. Well, especially if they got somebody like Nintendo where they're a large part of their strategy is the consoles. Yeah. I mean, PlayStation and Xbox are at least like releasing their games on the um, Windows PC versus Nintendo's like, nope, console, baby. That's what we live for. And and as much as I do not like it, uh, I, I think that, you know, there should be a little bit more. Um, in this case, I think that they're, I'm sorry, but you just put yourself in the crosshairs by pointing out that we, that we don't, you know, we will circumnavigate Nintendo's legal team. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised you do not have Nintendo knocking your door right now. Uh, I do think that, you know, certain fan projects, they should take a little bit of a, you know, cool your fucking heels. But I understand it's their own IP, and I don't own that IP, so I can't really say anything. But as a fan... The reality is, is when you're creating a fan-based production, particularly of a Nintendo product... We may disagree with it, but that's the reality. And as the system is, they're within the rights. That's just the way it is. And I mean, again, like I might not agree with it, but in the scheme of things, it's also not something that really greatly upsets me. You know what I mean? It's like, I wish it weren't that way. Right. But really, it's like, it really doesn't bother me that much. Right. I'm like, eh, that's not really something that I'm going to die in a hell about. <laughs> yeah. But anyways. We'll see what happens, you know? I mean, shit's always changing, and Nintendo doesn't, so... 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, we will see. Uh, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of our show. So I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the Ultra Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. For myself, Charlie, and Zelius, it's been a pleasure giving you to cover our heads, our mouths, and of course, our hearts. We'll be back next Thursday for another Ultra Confusion Thursday Night Hangout. Remember, kids, keep on gaming in the free world. Amen to that, brother.